Okay, in this second video, we're going to look at writing objectives for the flipped classroom. Now, most of you know how to write objectives already, but we're just going to go over a quick review of that, but then how it applies specifically to the flipped classroom. And I want to let you know that there's this little link down here. Uh, it, it's just a link to all these slides. These slides are on Google Documents. They're open for anyone to look at if they want. And so let's review real quickly what the flipped classroom is. Remember the traditional classroom there was uh, the lecture during class, and at home you did your problem sets, your homework. Whereas in the inverted classroom, you would do your lecture at home and your problem sets in class. The reason being that this was the passive uh, knowledge uh, transfer portion, and this portion over here, the in-class one, was when you get to apply the knowledge that you got. So we all know the familiar Bloom's taxonomy in which... Uh, these uh, terms are used to uh, create objectives and as we move further along here they become more and more uh, interactive and so the first two is remembering and understanding then going on to applying analyzing evaluating and creating these are the common verbs we use in the objectives and these are some ways that we could teach them now I can show you here for remembering you know we got video audio visuals all sorts of things like that and applying and these ones it's it's gonna be the problems the exercises case studies etc so we can split these up into two pieces and use them for, uh, for our flipped classroom. And so the at home, the passive uh, knowledge transfer ones, we're going to use these ones, remembering and understanding. And for the in-class activities, we're going to use these higher order objectives, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. So the low order ones and the higher order ones, that's how we're going to talk about these two. There are other taxonomies for uh, objective writing for psychomotor skills and affective skills and they also have a nice split as well uh, with the recall recognition stuff being at home and the application and problem solving being in class uh, uh, activity. So let me give you an example and so let's say I had in my initial uh, lecture apply the concepts of the trauma primary survey. So if I were to break this up into two different uh, groups, the at home and the in class, a lower order objective and a higher order objective. I might say for the lower order objective, the video that they watch, I want them to be able to list the components of the primary survey in the trauma victim. And that's going to be a recall question. And for application and problem solving, I would have these. Perform a primary survey in a trauma simulation and evaluate the completeness of the primary survey performed by uh, another group of students. And so these are some higher order objectives. And then you're going to design your activities based on these objectives. So list the components of the primary survey. Well, how would I get them to be able to do that? I'd have a video, right? And I show them the video here of all the components of the primary survey. And during the video, I go through each one of these in detail so the students uh, understand. And maybe uh, they're able to, to list those things now. And then the in-class activity is going to be our simulation. So perform a primary survey. So I would have a simulation case like this is one that we have where someone got stabbed in the neck and they need to perform a primary survey on this guy. And then evaluate the completeness of the primary survey, right? And so maybe one group is doing this while the other one is watching in the other room on a TV and they're going through a checklist and saying, yeah, that group forgot to do airway. They did do breathing uh, circulation is an issue which they haven't addressed and so they're able to evaluate which is a higher order uh, objective and so what I would recommend you know or, or you know request of you is that take one of the objectives of something that you teach yourself and uh, you know write that one in here and then try to break it up into a lower order and a higher order objective so the lower order you remember are the at home things and so those are the remember and understand and the higher order objectives are the things that you'll do in class apply analyze evaluate and create and later we're going to design activities that support those objectives and so my final two cents on this is that I think designing the objectives does make a difference because you want to build upon skills and so that students actually have something that they can use in real life and so just knowing material is pretty good but using the material is much better and so the flipped classroom really allows us to do this by making them learn the material, know the material, understand it at home, and then they get to come to class and use these activities to, to apply that knowledge, which also improves their knowledge and understanding of it, but also shows the utility of it and the practical application. All right, again, here's a link if you want to, to see these slides. 
and thanks for watching. If you have any comments, go ahead and put them uh, down below. Thank you.